In this video I'd like to show you how to solve this hard integral. And I wouldn't call it like epic, like the previous one, uh, but it's still significantly hard. And the reason is that uh, when you look at it there is no obvious way of, as to how to proceed. Because if you would were to think, well, let's try taking it by parts, then um, you know that there is no way to get rid of this e to the power of x. And if uh, you differentiate the fractional expression, then it will seem to get only more complicated as you differentiate it. And it is also not so clear as to what to substitute here. So, I don't know, it's kind of like a trial or error that you need to try and uh, uh, a few things and, and see what works. But here what works um, is to use uh, trigonometric, uh, trigonometric identities, although it is not um, clear at first what identity to use. So uh, the identity that will be useful here, so let me just uh, have some side notes over here. So what we need to prove is actually that um, cosine uh, uh, 1 plus cosine of x is actually equal to twice the cosine of x half and squared. And how we were to prove it, if you're curious of uh, how to prove it, well, there is an identity that the cosine of alpha uh, plus minus beta um, equals the cosine of alpha, the cosine of beta, and then minus plus, and then there's sine of alpha, sine of beta. Okay. And Let's just do some sidekick for, for, for some trigonometric identities. And if you will wonder, well, how do I remember this identity? Actually, there is a nice way uh, that I recommend to my students to remember identities. So this, you see this cosine function, he, he's kind of snub. And let me tell you what I mean by that. So if you see cosine of alpha plus beta here, then it is cosine cosine. So he first thinks only about himself. And then he will do uh, something on purpose. He will on purpose flip the sign here. It will be the opposite sign. And then when he has no cho choice, he lets uh, his friend to appear. But the sign, the sign is a nice guy. I mean, he, he he's, uh, he's a nice guy. So if you look at the sine of um, alpha plus minus beta, then this would be actually sine of alpha, uh, cosine of beta. And there is plus minus and then uh, uh, sine of beta sine of alpha and uh, the thing is that the sine is a is a nice guy uh, because you know he would uh, he wouldn't forget about himself if there is a sign but then he would let his friend appear and he will not flip the sign for you he will keep the sign and then he just permutes it symmetrically and uh, another so, so so that's a nice way to remember and it keeps like if you look at the derivative so because uh, sine is a snub, so he will not give you the sine of x, he will give you this minus. And sine is fine, you take his derivative and he gives back his friend. But then in the integral, uh, the, the, the cosine, when he has no choice, so he gives you the sine of x plus a constant. But then, uh, you know, the sine gets his revenge in the integral, he returns you the minus cosine of x plus c. Okay, and then you can ask, well, okay, how would you remember uh, this identity and how would you remember its proof? So actually, that's that's something nice that I also want to share with you. How would I remember the proof? And it's often that students ask me, how am I supposed to remember all those proof? Am I supposed to remember it all by heart? There are so many theorems. How am I supposed to remember it? And here, for this specific instance, I would like to reference the great mathematician David Hilbert, who was once has been quoted to, to say that mathematics is the art of identifying all those special cases that contain all the germs of generality. And let me tell you what I mean by that. So uh, here, in actually, to, in order to, to, to remember a proof or produce the proof, what you need to remember here is actually a key idea. The key idea that will lead you to the proof, and here I would also like to quote another mathematician whose name was Paul Erdős, who said, whenever we count something in two different ways, we get a theorem. And here we refer to, to the invariance. So let me tell you what I mean by that. So suppose that this, is ang this angle is alpha plus beta, right? And so this, uh, the coordinate of this point, by the definition of the trigonometric function, is the cosine of alpha uh, plus beta, and this is the sine of alpha plus beta, right? And now let me look here at another triangle, 
let me take this angle to be alpha and let me this uh, this angle to be beta and suppose that those angles are are acute it can be extended to or generalized to, to other angles by means of the formulas that we will derive so by again by definition then this is the cosine of alpha and this is the sine of alpha and this would be the cosine of beta and actually minus sine of beta right and so what uh, did I get by this well of course here I use the definition of the trigonometric functions and one other thing that I need to remember that I'm on the unit circle therefore cosine squared plus sine squared always equals to one but how would I get to prove the identity that I spoke about well what I need to do is to look at this triangle and this point being one zero and I need to look at this triangle and actually they have the same sides one on one here and the same angle here right therefore those um, triangles are isometric right they can be mapped onto one another they're equal so the key idea is that this distance is the same as this distance so the only thing i need to remember of how to reproduce the proof is that cosine squared plus sine squared equal to one and then i need to use the distance formula uh for between the two points and to equate this distance to this point to use along the way the cosine squared plus sine squared equals to one and then i will get the identity and this is the beautiful thing thing about mathematics that you only need to remember the core idea the invariance the the, the this deep uh, truth but a fundamental one and then you can reproduce everything so let us get back to this formula that we were taught uh, well, this integral but uh here if we get back to the formula with the cosine uh, that I said, it, it, this is actually the only one you need to remember to reproduce all others, then if you look at cosine of x plus x, which is the cosine of 2x, uh, then uh, then uh, we get that this is uh, cosine squared of x minus the sine squared of x, as I was saying. So, and those identities are the only ones that you really need to remember to derive absolutely every identity in trigonometry. So, uh, yeah, so from here, so from here, so when we know this, right, if we plug instead of sine here, uh, one minus cosine squared of x, then what we get is, uh, is uh, two cosine squared of x minus one, right? And then, uh, by saying that cosine of 2x is equal equals to 2 cosine squared of x minus 1, actually, we can actually deduce that 1 plus the cosine of 2x equals to 2 twice cosine squared x. And then when we plug in x half instead of x, we get this identity that is very useful so you see, knowing those basic facts, you can derive yourself absolutely everything. And this is the approach to mathematics, not to remember, but to remember only the key ideas and then to be able to derive everything yourself. So if we get back to this integral, yeah, this is it. So if we get back to this integral, oh, it's um, slid over here. So uh, maybe I would start a, a new canvas, right? Okay, so let's, let's see what it was. So it was one, plus sine of x divided by 1 plus cosine of x and e to the power of x dx. So what we would do here is we would use this identity. So uh, what we have at the bottom is actually uh, twice the cosine squared of x divided by 2. And for the sine, we have a similar identity. That's the hard part. That's the reason that the integral is kind of hard. That, OK, for the sine, we have this. We need to use the identities twice here. So it's 2 sine of x half uh, cosine of x half either power of x and then uh, dx and then what you would need and now one more step because if you remember then that one over cosine squared is actually the derivative of the tangents and then it's supposed to give you a hint well oh that that's a good way to proceed by in integration by parts and that's exactly what happens so if we separate the fraction here then we have here 1 over 2 cosine uh, squared of x half e to the power of x and here plus the uh, dx and here plus the integral of uh, here we're going to have uh, tangents of 
um, uh, x half. Uh, yeah, e to the power of x dx. And, well, it seems, uh, how would we proceed from here, right? This integral is actually manageable uh, because we can we can do it by parts, but this one seems uh, could, could be hard. But we're actually almost there because what we need to remember that this function, if uh, if we look at we make this uh, this substitution, actually this is the derivative. If we uh, say that this is f, right, and this is g prime, then then g g is actually going to be tangents of x half because if you take the derivative of this then this is one over the cosine squared of x half and then there is the internal derivative of this which is half so you get this expression so let's try to take this integral by parts and see what do we get so we get f uh, fg so we get tangents of x half e to the power of x and then we need to take the minus of integral uh, of g, which is tangents of x half, and we need to take the derivative of f, but f is e to the power of x. So there's the miracle, it's e to the power of x, and then we have plus this integral of tangents uh, x half, e to the power of x dx. And the miracle is that this is getting reduced, so we only need to add a constant. So the answer to our question is the solution that wasn't um, trivial at all to derive is that the integral of this function, the indefinite integral of this, is uh, just this nice expression. It's the tangents of x half e to the power of x plus a constant. So I hope you enjoyed this video and that this was useful to you and I really hope to see you in the next one.